The history of medicine is filled with horrific experiments that have the ability to send chills down our spines when we hear about them today. So let's check out five of the weirdest medical procedures that were once used. First up, let me tell you about the iron lung. The concept of external negative pressure ventilation was first introduced by John Mayo in 1670. However, the first widely used device using this idea was the iron lung, developed by Philip Brinker and Louis Shaw in 1928. Initially used for coal gas poisoning treatment, it later was used for treating respiratory failure caused by polio in the mid 20th century. The iron lung would essentially breathe for the patient who couldn't breathe for themselves. The person would lie in the metal airtight cylinder with only their head protruding from a sealed opening in the outer wall. A flexible diaphragm that was normally powered by an electric motor would then expand and contract, forcing the patient's chest to do the same, which would draw in air and then exhale it without the patient having to do it for themselves. The iron lung is now largely obsolete in modern medicine. Since then, more modern breathing therapies have been developed and also due to the eradication of polio in most of the world. However, the recent COVID-19 pandemic did see a brief resurgence of the device as a cheap and readily production available alternative to ventilators which were running in short supply at the time. Next up is milk transfusions. Believe it or not, for a few decades, even people milk transfusion was a real medical procedure prior to the discovery of blood types in 1901. According to this article in the Ashland Union on Wednesday, May 9th, 1855, there were a few instances of this procedure that were apparently successful. However, many of them in fact did result in death. In one instance, according to this paper published by the Columbia University in New York in 1880, the injection of milk caused the patient's pulse to drop immediately and they had to be resuscitated with a combination of morphine and whiskey. The patient, unsurprisingly, died 10 days later. <coughs> oh, I have a bit of a sore throat. Maybe I should treat it with some uh, heroin. Heroin was invented by English chemical researcher C.R. Older Wright in the 1870s. In the 1880s, heroin was introduced to the public and marketed by Bayer Pharmaceuticals as a safe and non-addictive substitute for morphine. They sold heroin-laced aspirin, which then they marketed towards children suffering from sore throats, coughs, and other cold-like symptoms. Doctors started to suspect that heroin may have been more addictive than Bayer was making it out to be when they saw patients coming back for endless supplies. Despite the pushback from the doctors, Bayer continued to market and sell heroin until 1913, just over a decade later, the FDA banned heroin altogether. Abracadabra, alica malaria cure? We all know the famous words abracadabra, but few of us knew where it actually comes from. The first known mention of this word was in a book published by Serena Simonicus, who was a physician to the Roman Emperor Caracalla. In chapter 52, he claimed that the cure for malaria could be attained by patients who wrote abracadabra over and over on a piece of paper with one less letter on each line until the letters formed a triangle with just an A at the bottom. They then had to tie the paper with flax and wear it around their necks for nine days before throwing it into an east running stream. Do you or someone you know suffer from asthma? Well then maybe you should take up smoking. In the early 20th century, there was a misguided belief that cigarettes could be used as a treatment for asthma. Smoking was thought to have bronchodilator effects, potentially providing relief for individuals with asthma symptoms. Physicians and medical practitioners recommended cigarettes as a form of self-medication, advising patients to inhale the smoke to alleviate respiratory distress. This practice persisted despite growing evidence of the harmful effects of smoking on lung health. Fortunately, as scientific understanding advanced and the risks associated with tobacco use became clearer, the medical community abandoned the notion of using cigarettes as an asthma treatment. Today, smoking is widely recognised as a major contributor to respiratory problems and healthcare professionals emphasise the importance of quitting smoking for overall health and well-being. So that's five of the weirdest practices in medical history. What do you think was the weirdest? Let us know in the comments.